Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. I love you all. My name is Maya the King, and why do people who live in Greece hate waking up at dawn? Because dawn is tough on Greece. Now then, thank you so much for clicking on my video, and you might be thinking to yourself, why did you even bother clicking here? Well, for the funny one-liner jokes at the start, of course, or perhaps because I'm one of the fewer viewers out there who can help you figure out if you need a game in 10 minutes or less. So stick around and find out for sure. So today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam earlier this morning called Lua Island, a farming sim co-op adventure style game developed and published by Feel Free Games, released not in early access and selling for $20. Okay, so what is this game anyway? Like, what's it really? Well, you create your own customizable character and find yourself just hopping into Luma Island, now go forth and produce. That's it. There's no real story. There's no real commitment. There's no real engagement or character. So let's go into the positives followed by the negatives, shall we? So up first for the positives is the sound design. I really liked it. However, the music leaves a lot to be desired. It comes and goes at random times. It's really forgettable and doesn't really do the game any favors when it's supposed to be helping set the mood. It does not do that here. It also has no voice acting. But the, vo the, the sound effects are really nice, and the ambiance is really nice. A lot of the game, a lot of games tend to forget how important ambiance can be, and here they did a great job with it. Overall, the sound design was far better than it was worse, so that's why it's here in the positives. Next thing I'd like to talk about positively is the stability. The game runs really super smooth and really stable. It was, it's always nice to see a fully released game and it actually not be riddled with bugs. I'm looking at you, Bethesda and EA. No frame rate dropping freezing, crashing, clipping, or anything like that. So it was just really nice to be able to have a nice, smooth, coherent gameplay experience. And it was very responsive. Uh, both of these things always really help create a much more pleasant gaming experience, and I'm very happy to report that that was here. Up next is the price tag, and when you consider that the game is co-op and how big it is with how much it is and how much is included here, plus the fact that it's not broken and despite the fact that it doesn't have any voice acting, does have decent sound effects plus all the different gameplay mechanics and options available to you, and you see that it starts to have a pretty legit price tag offering you what you'd expect to be getting for $20. In short, the game is not ripping you off with its price tag, which is always nice to see. And last but not least is the gameplay. However, this will be in the negatives as well, but in a broad spectrum, it's not bad gameplay. It's got some good ideas. Dungeons you can traverse with puzzles to solve for loot, mining caves where you need torches to light your way so you can go deeper, random events that happen like an earthquake, basic farming and harvesting mechanics that are all coherent and work fairly well, a large city you can explore, loot, and do other stuff in. I mean, if you were to just look at the gameplay in a more broad sense, you'd say it's not that bad. To me, I think it's average, but that's not bad, which is why I've got it here in the positives. And I'm going to go into, you know, later why I, all the bad things I found about it. But the way the gameplay works is simple. You pick a profession and basically this unlocks types of things that you can craft to expand that, profe that profession and other stuff along the way. You can harvest resources as normal in games like these, and most things work the way that you'd expect them to. Build this station to build more advanced resources. Dive deeper into caves or forests facing enemies and traps and puzzles to get the more rare stuff and slowly complete quests or sub products or expand your farm. Overly, it's fairly typical and works as you'd expect it to. And the next thing which is not in the positives but I do want to point out is the graphics. Now to me, they feel really old school graphics, right? Like not really particularly nice to look at, but they're not ugly either, like there is a pleasantness to them. There are a lot of places that are missing details or badly shaded, but it's it's not awful, it's just not great either in my opinion. So I just wanted to say that, that I think the graphics could have been a bit better, like they could have been more colorful, more vibrant, could have been more detailed, but they could have also been a bit worse. I see a lot of people talking about how beautiful the game looks, but I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing it. Is it nice? I guess. I mean, is it pleasant? I guess. But it, let's not kid ourselves. This is not the best looking game I've seen. It's, it's like a slightly more detailed version of Stardew Valley, which came out 20 years ago. I'm just not seeing the wonder. I'm not seeing the beauty here. It's, it's pleasant enough, I guess. It's, it's, it's standard. It does the job, but I'm not seeing it as beautiful or super awesome. Alright, so now we'll go on to the negatives, but before that, if you're finding my video informative or entertaining, then consider joining my royal guard by hitting that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that bell too. Why? Well, because I review random games at random times, and that bell is going to let you know when I do so. Since they're so random, and you never know when I'm going to be reviewing or what I'm going to be reviewing, you know you don't know what you might be missing out on, and you could, it could have been a game you've been missing out on your whole life. So, make sure you stay informed and click that bell. Okay, now, on to the negatives. 
The first negative I'm going to talk about is the gameplay, since it was also in the positives, and I want to get that out of the way quick. The gameplay is almost good, but here's the problem. It borders on being tedious, and, and that's the main issue that I was finding with it. There's a lack of engagement, and without engagement, you don't have player interest, and without player interest, you don't have player retention, and without player retention, you start to create boredom in your own mind while you're playing or finding things that are more tedious or more frustrating, and when that happens, it's very hard to make a comeback, because at that point, the player is no longer looking at the good, but only looking at the tedious and the bad, and when that happens, the game starts to die to the gamer. And that's kind of what happened to me. There's no real rhyme or reason for the problems that are occurring during farming, especially with grapevines. Water them, weed them, fertilize them. Okay, fine. So far, makes sense. Pretty typical. But I've never seen a farming game where you plant everything at the same time, fertilize it all at the same time, water it all at the same time, and then they grow at different rates. Like, I've never seen that ever. And I've never seen every single crop suffering from a random different problem that basically forces you to babysit your crops. And while you're sitting in here babysitting your crops because they won't grow with weeds or lack of water or whatever, then this farming game is forcing you to sit and stay and watch when there's other stuff you could be and should be doing. And nothing you do is going to fix these issues. The game made me think that fertilizer would stop the weeding, but it didn't. Then there's the mining. At first I thought it was interesting that you can go into the mine and have to literally dig your way to the good stuff by, you know, working through these stone pillars and lighting your way with tortures. But then the spider showed up. The spider in the mines is ridiculous. He's not able to be killed. Therefore, whenever he pops up, you are forced to run from him and abandon your mining expedition altogether. So you can't even mine ore properly or effectively because he could show up. Can't kill it, so it's legit just run away if he appears or you die. Which I already feel like traveling into the mine, grabbing and crafting torches to light the mine so you can harvest away at random rock just to make way to the ore is already a bit tedious, but now you're adding in a random spider event that makes me give up entirely when I need that damn copper ore and that just, of course, makes it more tedious. There's no manual save, only an exit save, which is kind of frustrating. There's no real direction or purpose to anything you're doing, which obviously leads to zero motivation, which leads to slower movement, production, a lack of energy or purpose to doing anything, which drains away the whole reason of you doing anything at all. It costs a thousand gold to purchase the recipe for your first storage chest, and of course you don't have that in the beginning, so I guess just get used to chugging around everything you find, and that's just what I've discovered so far. And why do you not have a hunger, food, stamina, or health meter? I mean, at that point, you're basically just a robot or an NPC who can chug along with no need for sleep, breaks, or anything. Made it feel lifeless when you can't improve relations with characters, or sleeping provides no purpose, or you never need to eat. The fact that chopping down a tree only gets you one lumber, or mining one rock gives mining rock gives you only one stone. I mean, that means that you'll be chopping and chipping forever to get the resources you need for one simple thing, which makes the game feel incredibly freaking grindy. Which, of course, remember when I was mentioning the mine earlier, and you gotta to go deeper in the mine, you need torches. Well, guess what? You better go out there and spend forever chopping down trees because it's one lumber at a time to get what you need to craft the torches you need, so that way you can mine forever so you can build the one ingot you need when you need nine of them you see what i'm saying like it's it's tedious and it's and it's and it's grindy and in every way in, in terms of gathering resources you can't escape those definitions tedious and grindy so yeah that's probably the main way that i can describe this game is that it just to me felt very tedious like everything felt needlessly tedious and i don't understand why not a great word you want to describe the main aspect of your game the gameplay but it was Next up for the negatives was the user interface. Now, it's definitely not the worst I've seen. You know, it's not bad, but I still wanted to make mention of the things I didn't like. Like, it is clearly lacking. Now, it does have tooltips, which is nice, along with definitions. Again, nice. A lot of games don't put those in, so it was appreciated to see them here. But the UI was kind of annoying, and it was kind of lacking things. For instance, one thing it's lacking is a compass. Considering you can rotate your camera 360 degrees, and you've got a large, complicated town setup, it'd be nice if you actually knew which direction was north, south, east, or west. Otherwise, whenever you're trying to find something, you're almost always lost and double, triple, quadruple checking your map to make sure that you're going in the right direction. The map is badly designed and hard to find what you're looking for because of this lack of compass. There were, they, they, they were so close to doing it right and then they just fumbled it at the end. And last but not least for me was the lack of purpose. There's really no motivation to do anything or accomplish anything. Like, why am I here? What am I meant to be doing? What's the overall driving force that compels me to keep progressing? What does this game do that others like it doesn't do? I can't figure out the answers to those questions. Even for a casual, simple, relaxing game, there has to be a purpose or a reason to keep pushing forward. If there isn't one, then I find myself losing interest fairly quickly as I can't get into it if there isn't a reason for it. 
All right, so that's all I got to say negatively about the game. So what are my final thoughts? Well, it's not a bad game, despite what you might have just heard. That's what I think. I think that the game is average. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. I think the magic of this game lies in its co-op potential, which I unfortunately didn't get to experience. I think if you were playing this with friends, this would be a lot more fun and feel a lot less tedious, and there'd be a lot more energy to it, because the game is a really rather calm and, you know, take your time. But if you had friends with you, then it wouldn't be as calm. You know, it'd be a little bit more hectic, a little bit more fun going on. So why do I not think it's terrible? Because it does have pleasant graphics, a huge amount of content, it's stable, it's affordable, you can play it with friends, and there's a shit ton to do here with tons of different paths on how to do it, and all of it is fairly well designed and coherent and put together. But why do I think it's not amazing? Because when played alone, it does feel tedious and boring and grindy, with a lack of motivation, immersion, player retention, or a reason for doing anything. Plus a lot of the different gameplay components, which feel like they were designed to force everything to take much longer than you'd want them to. Like I said, grindy resource gathering, horrible map design, lack of voice acting, lack of purpose or direction, and I could keep going. So for me, who played this game alone, I feel like this game is average because for everything it does right, it also does something wrong. But do I think the game is worth your time and money? Well, if you're a fan of adventure farming sim games, then yeah, I think you'll like this game. It's got all the basics you'd expect from a game like that. Is it worth your money? Sure, I mean, for 20 bucks, you're getting a pretty solid game and you're not getting ripped off. Do I recommend it? Again, that depends on you. If you were looking for something like Stardew Valley, My Time at Porsche, or Farmer's Life, then no. Those games have charm and personality and character. But if you were looking for something like Animal Crossing with less charm, then sure, knock yourself out. I personally was finding the game boring, but maybe you won't, and for 20 bucks, you don't have to worry about the financial risk of trying it out. So if it looks interesting to you, then feel free to check it out. All right? All right, that's all I got. So yeah, that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching, with a special thanks to those of you who stuck around to the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.